over. He was given two hours to make it, had no problem, and I would guess, Gil Clancy, that uh, he's probably uh, over 140 now. Well, I'd say he, he has a good weight advantage on Alexis Aguayo, and he's probably three or four pounds heavier. Uh, Tim, this first round is going to be a key round in this fight. Well, in the opening seconds, they are doing what they said they were doing. Nobody coming wailing out there. We thought Gannigan might, but he likes to consider himself a boxer, and with due cause, he does know how to box. It's just that normally his success has come by going out there and letting it go from both sides. With that familiar tattoo of the lion on his back, Andy Gannigan, the pride of Hawaii. Alexis Arguello, the champion in red. Round one, scheduled for 15. This fight originally scheduled for April 3rd. The champion suffering a virus infection that postponed it. The first postponement by Alexis Arguello in his 78 professional fights. Manigan digging a right to the body. The first real good scoring blow. Missed with a left hook. Southpaw always uh, brought into consideration they say that Arguello sometimes has trouble with him, but all he does is beat him all, Gil. That's right. I'd like to have trouble like that every day in a week. <laughs> Indeed, his last opponent, Bubba Buscemi, was also a southpaw in his third title defense down in Beaumont, Texas. Another right to the body by Gannigan. And the champion digs back with a combination of the body. Fighting a southpaw is mind over matter, Tim. You have to make the southpaw move the way you want him to move. Alexis should be moving to his left, which he's successfully doing right at this moment. Guayo trained by Eddie Futch, who's also working with heavyweight champion Larry Holmes across the street here in Las Vegas. Albert Silva is the trainer of Andy Gannigan. Arguello blocking that straight left hand from Gannigan and then punishing him with a left hook to the head. Under a minute to go in round number one. <laughs> Gannigan has uh, shown himself to be fearless against everybody, and he seemed very relaxed and very poised coming into this title fight against a, a boxer many consider a living legend. Well, he's much shorter than Aguayo, and he has been reaching in a little bit. If he gets nailed coming in... Oh, good left hook! goes Aguayo down to the canvas. A solid left hook. Just as Gil Clancy said uh, he might be reaching in, he stepped in and landed that left hook and set the champion to the canvas. That has the crowd on its feet. Gannigan trying to bore in, lands a right hand to the ear. Arguello, a straight right hand to the forehand, and then a good left to the body of Gannigan. Well, there's the feel-out bound, Tim. Some feel-out bound. It lasted about a minute and a half, the feel-out portion of this first round. Gannigan cannot get through the defense. We're in the final seconds of round one. And Arguello with a slight smile at Gannigan, coming back to his corner. Arguello appears to be very clear-eyed and in very good possession of his senses, but it was a solid left shot that drops him to the canvas. There is the champion, Arguello, stunned in this first round by that dangerous left hand of Andy Gannigan. But then we knew that Gannigan was dangerous. He can punch and he can knock anybody out if he hits them right. You know, Aguayo is a great... Aguayo is a great fighter, Tim, but one punch can make a great fighter just a good fighter. That's we'll be right. We're going to see that one punch again. Here's a replay. You see him boring in. There's the solid left hook that sent him to the canvas. And uh, Arguello, we'll see it one more time. Right there. No, that's not it. Here it comes. Right it's, to the it's body. A straight left hand, right to the chin, and down goes Arguello. All right, so the knockdown scored by Andy Gannigan in the first round here, and we are waiting, waiting round number two. There's the bell. The champion in red. A solid right hand by Arguello lands. And that just brings Gannigan right back. And a good solid right hand by the challenger Gannigan scores. Tim, when, when Gannigan comes in, though, he leaves himself wide open. Sticks that chin up in the air, throws the punches, and he's dangerous, but he leaves himself wide open. That's been the pattern, and we saw Gonzalez knock him down in that 10-round decision scored by Gonzalez, but Gannigan loves the combat. Tim, he got hit with a good left hook by Aguayo when he smiled at him and says, yes, good punch. Talk about a confident fighter. Basically kind of a shy, reticent young man outside of the ring, very 
personable and friendly, but uh, kind of a shy guy. But when he gets in here, this is his arena, and he loves it. Again, the champion scoring and Gannigan smiling. Whether that will discourage Alexis is highly unlikely because he just had too much experience to be put off by that kind of an attitude. Round number two scheduled for 15. If you just joined us, Gannigan the challenger in gold and the champion Arguello on the floor in round one. Solid left hand shot. Left to the body by Gannigan. Been a long time since Arguello's been on the floor against Jose Luis Ramirez. Another southpaw, Tim, had him on the deck. About 10 fights ago. Both fighters are boxing here in round number two. Gannigan lands another good left hand with Arguello, the champion, against the ropes. Arguello able to block most of the other blows in the exchange. Gannigan just flicks that right jab out, Tim. It's, it's really not even a punch. He tries to slide in behind it, and then he throws those heavy combinations. Under a minute to go, round two. 30-year-old Alexis Arguello, 29-year-old Andy Gannigan, 78 fights for the champion, 37 for Gannigan. They are experienced men in there. Gannigan was undefeated as an amateur in Hawaii. Golden Gloves champion of that state. Lost to Baba Buscemi in the National Golden Gloves Championships back in 72. Arguello, of course, started boxing at 14 in Nicaragua. Turned professional in 1968. Arguello is being very, very patient, and Gannigan is getting impatient. Watch your head. Watch your head. That knockdown has got to give Gannigan quite a lift in confidence, although he appeared to have plenty coming in. Final seconds of round two. Round number three, the WBC lightweight championship bout. The champion Arguello on the left of your screen, Andy Gannigan from Honolulu, Hawaii, takes a straight right hand from the champion and comes right back, scoring a left of his own. Arguello blocks the next two punches. Tim Eddie. Good Arguello. right hand by Aguayo. He backed up Gannigan with that shot. First time he has in the fight. Then this is a war. Eddie Futch in Aguayo's corner said, try to use that right hand underneath and left hook behind it. Let's see if Alex does it. That's the combination he was working on all week in the gym. Aguayo backs up Gannigan again with a straight right hand. Carlos Padilla is the referee. Scoring done by three judges at ringside. Solid right hand to the chest of Gannigan. That right jab of Gannigan's is just a teaser. It means absolutely nothing. It just flicks it out there. It tries to get the, the right Alexis Aguayo's attention. Aguayo just missed. Just grazed the chin with a big right hand. Gannigan picked it up well. Oh, he knocks him down with a solid right hand. Solid right hand sends Gannigan to the canvas. He got up immediately, indicating he's all right, but it was a solid shot by Arguello. Arguello caught him reaching, Tim. Caught him reaching. Round number three. Now each fighter has been down. Gannigan boring in, but Arguello blocking well. And everything we expected. The height advantage is really helping Arguello because Gannigan has to reach in for his punches, and when he does, he leaves himself wide open. There, he just got nailed with a good left hook. Solid exchange by both fighters, and Arguello lands another right hand. Good right hand knocks Gannigan into the ropes. In the Arguello corner, now Arguello trying to finish, scoring to the chest. He's got Gannigan tied up in the corner. This is with a right hand. Gannigan refusing to hold on, goes toe-to-toe -to -toe with him. He nailed Arguello with a tremendous right hook. He backed him up. He backed him up and worked his way to the middle of the ring. What a show by Gannigan. What a battle, Gannigan and Arguello. And I doubt he's hit hard, Arguello. He wobbled him. Gannigan staggered Arguello. Arguello hanging in there now. 30 seconds left in round three. Less than that, pardon me, we're coming down to final seconds. In the third round. Good solid left 
by Arguello. And a right hand staggers Gannigan at the bell. successfully with his forearm and gloves. Lands a right uppercut. Gannigan just pulling away, reducing the complete force. Gannigan was hurt at the end of the last round, Tim. I don't know whether he's completely recovered or not. Well, Arguello had been staggered by Gannigan with about 15 seconds left. Now they bang together and Padilla warning Gannigan, I believe, for hitting on the break. Round four, scheduled for 15. Arguello getting all he can handle from number one rated Andy Gannigan of Honolulu, Hawaii. Tim Ryan and Gil Clancy ringside, live from Las Vegas on CBS Sports Saturday. Alexis Arguello having won 18 consecutive title bouts. Having his problems early against the hard-punching Andy Gannigan. Tim, very little circling. They're both in a straight line. That's why the punches are so devastating. Arguello missed with a big right hand. And paid for it, Tim. Gannigan trying a right down below and the left over the top. Aguayo backed him up, but it's still not a full four shot as Gannigan was able to pull away from it. Aguayo is keeping him at the proper distance, Tim. He's got him out there where he has to reach, and he can he can still reach Gannigan. Gannigan can't reach him without taking a big chance. 72-inch reach for the champion, scores a right hand. Beautiful combination, Tim. Left hook under, right hand on the chin. Gannigan trying to work his way in, failed to do so. Under a minute to go. Round number four. Good left hand by the champion. Then a right to the body. Arguello scores another combination. And Gannigan looks a little bit wobbly. Every time he looks wobbly, he comes back, Tim. He is a battler. Takes another right hand. But again, he was backing up. Arguello is so much the cooler of the two. Andy's winging and Alexis has those hands up. Good concentration. Well, technically, perhaps uh, the best boxer in the game today. And again, he lands a big right hand and another one. Gannigan battles right back. Scored the right hand, missed the left. The art of Arguello against the Hawaiian punch of Andy Gannigan. There was Good that right, right hand the underneath. Wow, that hurt. Final seconds now, round number four. Blood from the nose of Andy Gannigan. Tim Ryan and Gil Clancy live from the Aladdin Hotel in Las Vegas. The challenger, Andy Gannigan, bleeding from the nose at the end of round four. We are into round five with the champion in red on the left of your screen. Tim and Gannigan's corner, they told him, don't wait. And Arguello's corner told him to go after him. So we should see the big bombs again this round. Right hand by Arguello just grazed the face of Gannigan. He scores a solid left jab. And another. Tim, that jab almost put Gannigan down. That's the strength of Arguello. Again, blood from the nose and some redness under the right eye of Gannigan. Gannigan scores a combination to the face of the champion. He's pulling away. Got a piece of him with the right hand. See, the, dif the difference, Tim, is that Gannigan has to reach. And Arguello can keep his balance and still get his punches off. That's the big difference in this fight. Solid right hand by 
Derek Wales landing on the forehead of Gannigan. That left by Gannigan got through. Wales trying to back him up with a jab. He does so. He's been successful when he has been jabbing more. And he's starting to look a little desperate, Tim. He's having a tough time in there right at this moment. He has to land another big punch to get really get back into this fight. More blood coming from the nose of the challenger Gannigan in gold. Kind of a fighter you can expect will have to be carried off on his shield, however. He is a game young man. And he had the champion down in round one. He knows it can happen again with one of those dangerous punches. Tom Cool collected Alexis Arguello. Trying to assume control here in this fifth round. Under a minute to go. There was an example. Gannigan had to reach in, got nailed. And a good right hand followed it from Arguello. Trying to press the advantage now here. Under 30 seconds to go in round five. Gannigan appearing a little tired now. A little rocky too, Tim. Right hand scored from the champion. Knocks him back with a jab. And a good solid left jab lands. And another. Arguello almost inexorably taking control as we come into the final seconds of round five. Knocks him down at the bell. He has to get up, Tim. If he yeah, doesn't get up, the fight's over. The floor he has to be saved bell. by the bell. Yeah, yeah. He, he has, has to not get up. Gonna make it. He cannot get up. It is over. A fifth round knockout at the bell by the champion Alexis Arguello. And Gannigan still in some pain. Right in his corner, a combination in the final seconds by Arguello. Dropping Gannigan and a solid right hand finishing him off. So this most distinguished of champions getting off the floor from a knockdown in round one, just slowly assuming control and battering Gannigan about the ring and Gannigan still needing some attention from his handlers and the ring commission doctor Donald Romeo who is in the ring on the right of your screen attending to Andy Gannigan, a huge right hand appeared to be the one that really hurt him and Alexis Arguello winning his 19th consecutive championship bout he had all he could handle early from the number one challenger in the world Andy Gannigan but once more showing his resilience his ability as a boxer and his enormous punching power Gannigan is still on the canvas there are a lot of bodies between us and him and so we are we are uh, trying to get a better view of him but apparently is all right and so we'll be returning here to Las Vegas Nevada to talk to the champion in just a moment we are going right back to Tim Ryan and the champion Alexis Arguello. I would like to say that boxing needed this. We've had the Holmes fight called off for one reason, the Hagler fight for another, and of course Sugar Ray couldn't make it. And finally we got a championship bout with some action. And next week we hope to have a championship fight as good as the one you just saw today on CBS Sports Saturday. Rolando Navarrete will defend his WBC super featherweight crown against Bazooka Limon. We will bring you that fight live from Reno. And still ahead of us today, after Tim talks to Alexis, we're going to take you to the lavish surroundings at Jerry Cooney's camp in Palm Springs. He is now getting ready to challenge the champion, Larry Holmes. And also this afternoon ahead of us, we're going to pick up with our theme of who is in charge here. Now, this time, the questions and answers come from the powers that be in tennis, where things are very mixed up like a bowl of alphabet soup. And in a year of very bad breaks, for the top three-year-old thoroughbreds, we are going to look at a man who is putting them back together. The remarkable story of the horse Frosty Shoes. Is Tim? All right, Brad, we're here in the ring with the champion Alexis Arguello. Another exciting title defense and a little more exciting, perhaps, than you really expected. You didn't plan on going down before defending your title successfully. What happened there in the first round? 
Well, I think everybody saw the uh, right hand of Gannigan. I tell you from the beginning, I expect that kind of fight. I expect going a little further, but I, I hit Gannigan with a good, good shot. In the early round, they're slowing down his condition. Okay, we're going to show uh, how you finished him off in round number five. It was right near the end of the round. It looked like he was somewhat tired. As you said, you had already slowed him down, and you landed a big combination, and then I think a big right hand will send him to the canvas. Yes, uh, before that right hand, and I hit him with two good le left handed to the body, and then the right hand will. That one was a good one. Yeah, good solid well, left hook and yeah. right to the body. Yeah. Then I tried again because I, I knew it was hurt. The last, the left, uh, the last uh, right hand was in case if he's hurt. I, I hit him good. Yeah. Well, here's one more look at it. That was a punch that really hurt Garnigan. Solid right hand to the body. Uh, Gil Clancy talked about the uh, reach advantage that you had. Uh, your height and reach were a factor against him. He had to be reaching in because he uh, punches wide. You knew how to, to combat that and use your reach. Well, uh, and the, the earlier two rounds, it gave me a lot of trouble because he's a really a uh, weird, uh, difficult style. You know, and I always say that each fighter, we have our own style. And Gannigan is one of those guys that have their own style. He's uh, really weird, but in the third, third first round, I knew it, how the, they going to kind of punch me in. And the third round, I really knew it, what's going on. I, Started was, to getting, take it away. I yeah. was getting in touch with uh, 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 Eddie Fudge. He told me what to do, and I pay really good attention to him. Well, as usual, you did the usual fine job. Let's go back into round one, and maybe you want to see exactly what happened there. We're going to show the knockdown by Gannigan. There it is. There's the right hand. It was really good. And a no, right to the body, one. and then a straight left that hand. That was the, 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 yeah. the best one. See? Now, when you went down, you know, what goes through your mind when that happens? Do you think, uh-oh, I'm in trouble? Uh, what, no. what were you thinking? Uh, the first time I went to the canvas, I, I mean, in, in a long time ago, I didn't know what, uh, when I was hit, and I, the, I knew it when I was on the floor. But now, and, uh, until I received the punch at my chin, I knew it, it was a really good punch. And uh, was my condition give, make me strong enough to support Conditioning the is everything, absolutely. Yes. Well, here's the man who found out about the conditioning because he scored that big punch, Andy Gannigan. Glad to see you up and feeling all right. Can you turn around a little bit to this camera right here? Andy, when you knocked him down in round one, what were you thinking? Did you think you had a chance to take him out? I thought I, you know, I had a chance to finish him off, but uh, I was wrong. He's a great champion. And he knew how to handle himself really good. Did you have trouble getting him? Did his height and reach, uh, was that a problem for you getting close to him? Well, that was uh, one of the reasons why, because his height and reach. He's well, a great you... champion. I can congratulate him. Thank you. Thank All you. right, Andy Gannigan, one of the nice guys in this lightweight division, and put on a great battle here, and I know your fans in Hawaii are proud of your effort against Alexis Arguello. I shall return. I shall return. All right, Andy Gannigan, the challenger. And the winner again today is 19th consecutive championship victory, Alexis Arguello. Where do you, where do you go from here? I think uh, you're talking about moving up in weight. What would you like to do next? 100%. I just uh, want to uh, tell you one thing, team. Uh, I want you to be the first person to know that I, I talked to my manager tonight. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be moving to you know, welterweight because I really uh, feel that I can give 100% in, in my natural weight. And uh, I think from now on, we're going to fight in, uh, in junior welterweight. 140 pounds. If you won that championship, you would be the only man ever to win titles in four different weight divisions. You want that, don't you? Well, I really uh, going to try. I'm going to do the best I can. And I promise, I hope that the four title shot could be in CBS because I really want to thank all the people who work for CBS. They were being really nice with me. Uh, Mark, yourself. Gil Clancy, I really appreciate the way you treat me and the way you treat my people. Alexis, we admire you as a boxer and as a man, and it's a pleasure to have you with us anytime. And if the price is right, we hope it's on CBS, too. All right, we'll be back with more of CBS Sports Saturday. Now let's go to Brent Musburger after this.